Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. First off, really sorry, it's been a long time since my last video, and that's for a few reasons. First of all, spring just came, and uh, we're getting into summer now, so I've been doing lots of home projects. And the other thing is, is I dislocated my right shoulder, and then four weeks later, dislocated my left shoulder. What are the chances? You probably don't believe me, but here's a little bit of proof. Um, it was really painful, and I couldn't do much for a little while, so anyways, you get the idea. Today I got a little video about the second part of that big 24-inch uh, subwoofer build. I've been posting a little bit on Instagram about that. And then after this video, I hope to get back into some driver tests. It's been a while since I've done some driver tests. In the meantime, let's uh, see how this subwoofer build turned out. So last time in part one, we left off with me having the boxes fully constructed and I was about to start painting. So this is me applying primer to the bare MDF boxes. That's basically the first step. And then I sand all that primer to about 300 grit. And this is a very long, annoying, tedious process. I blow all the dust off with the air nozzle. And uh, really, all this primer sanding, primer sanding is, it's half the job. Like constructing the box is more fun and looks a little more impressive, but this is half the work. Um, I've designed every side and then I got a, any little specks or divots or MDF seams or anything like that. I hit it with uh, some putty and then sand it back and then spray primer again. So this process, it's annoying. I This is... Finishing can be really fun, but when it comes to black paint, it's the worst. So you see me just going over and over again. And then I find other little things, because I inspect it. Every time I sand it back, I look real close and see what I can find. And there's always something, it seems. And then here, I think this is the last primer coat um, before I give it one last sanding to about a 400 grit and then a final finish. Oh, here I forgot to drill out the final speak on hole uh, before I give it the final coat. So I'm just drilling out that hole and I was slightly off center so I took a drum sanding roll and uh, just helped work it out a little bit so that the speak on could sit nice and center like it does now. So this is the final coat. I am with this done, I'll just need to let it cure and it'll be finished. With all the paint on there, these speak on holes, they're already tight as it is and I just was a little too tight so um, I couldn't get it in there by hand and so I used the screws to cinch it down and pull it tight into the hole. Um, that's just a little bit too much primer and paint build up I guess. It even didn't go all the way in there. It sit, sat proud about half a millimeter when I was done, but it actually looked all right, so I was okay with that. And then we, um, I, I attached some feet. I have rubber feet. Uh, these are pretty standard type of feet that I use on subwoofers. Uh, they hold the subwoofer still. They're easy to install. Uh, they get the subwoofer off the ground a little bit, and it looks really sharp. I debated using five. Uh, feet just to you know spread the weight a little bit but I ended up with just four and then I used insulation for uh, the batting inside the speaker box uh, it's a sealed box so there's no worry about dust everything should stay still inside and the dimensions worked out that um, stud width insulation felt really snug inside and um, it worked out really well, so that's the way I went. A lot of people use denim insulation or polyfill, but regular old, you know, pink fiberglass insulation works really well for this application. It used a lot, though. Finally nearing the end here, I uh, carefully set the subwoofer up near the driver cutout so that I could wire things up. And these are dual 4 ohm voice coils, so I wired them in series to give an 8 ohm load because each of these will have um, a Crown XLS 2502 
amplifier bridged into it so they'll that amplifier will be really happy with the bridged load into eight ohms and then these things are so heavy uh dropping it into the hole this was really challenging and any there's no room for error like any mistake here and the chip is painted or, or paint is chipped or anything like that and and I'd be in a lot of trouble. And I was lucky the hole was just large enough that it still looked tight and sat flush and everything. But it could accommodate the zip ties on either side. It was tight, but it could do it. And um, so I was able to use these zip ties, which I've never had to do before. Um, such, a, such a large subwoofer. It's really the only way I could figure out how to do it. And then with it in place, I could just yank those out of there. And it did not cause any problems with the paint, thankfully. So... I was really happy with that. And now it's in there and it's never coming out. <laughs> I then screwed it in. I used eight screws. There's eight screw holes here. Um, but I may drill out some more screw locations and uh, cinch it down because, man, there, there's a lot of weight behind that sub. And I want to make sure it's really in there well. I mean, even eight inch subwoofers use eight screws. So seems to me that this should have at least double that. Uh, so that's not covered in the video, but I, I may go ahead and do that later. And then I use some baby wipes. Uh, this is a good trick, depending on the cone type and material. Uh, just because these have been in storage for so long, they have a bit of dust on them and little uh, grit and things <laughs> like that. Oh, this is the oh. first time I realized how heavy yeah. these are. I had to tip these up, and they're insane. These are so heavy, I, I wouldn't even know how to weigh them. I could not pick these up by myself. And I had to do it all over again for the second subwoofer. So, here they are in place, uh, ready to go. I just got to wire up the amps and stuff, so I did that and gave it a little test run. Here's a near-field measurement. Uh, this give me kind of the anechoic response and then I did a measurement from the listening position. You can see the two measurements. Um, this is the near field measurement. It does roll off pretty steep. Um, you know that's to be expected with this slightly undersized box and the high QES that this subwoofer has. And then this is the in-room response. Um, I know my room really well. I know I've got a bit of a peak at uh, about 60 hertz and then quite a bit of suck out in the 120 hertz range so this isn't abnormal to me when I overlay the two uh, the near field and the um, in-room position you can see how much room gain there really is I have the subs <clears throat> a little bit hot relative to the mains here and uh, that's okay so in the end I went with a 60 hertz crossover to try and tame things out I I would normally add a bunch of EQ and try to get this thing extended below 10 hertz and and flatten out that 60 hertz range, but these are not a permanent uh, install for my room, so I'm not going to get too carried away with it. I'm just going to live with it like that. And also, I got two near field measurements: one with the Behringer iNuke 3000 and one with this Crown XLS. And you can see the two differences. Um, I don't know if this is driver differences, uh, measurement issues, or amp differences. There, there may be more roll-off on the crown below uh, 10 or 20 hertz. Um, that would be my first inkling, is that it's the amp, but I can't know for certain. So anyways, uh, here they are. They're done. They're in their place. I think they look sharp. Uh, I really like how they look, and I'm a little bit jealous of this individual who gets to have these. I just have no way of accommodating these. And each one of these will get a crown amp, and that's what this amp is right here. Uh, so overall, I'm really pleased with how these turned out. This is a scene from The Accountant. I had to give these a whirl. Of course, the camera microphone does not pick up the true infrasonics that this gives off. But... All right, guys, there you have it. Uh, that is the Pierce Audio 24-inch subwoofer builds, and they're done. So the new owner, can he can come get them soon. Uh, they're quite large, and <laughs> I don't think my wife wants them around. 
Neither will his, but uh, that's his problem. <laughs> so anyways, thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, catch me on these next videos. Um, hopefully I can get them rolling again. Although, just a warning, it is summer. My kids are into things, and uh, so they may be, might be spaced out a little more than, uh, than I have over the winter. Thanks, guys. Bye.